Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thanks for joining me. A lot of material to cover today, so I'm not going to sit here and bloviate much. Here is what we're going to build. It's a modular catwalk system for your industrial and sci-fi tabletop games. All the components that you see here interlock in a standard system, uh, so they're very stable on the table. If you're new to the channel, here's the secret ingredient. I use it all the time. Graphics medium chipboard. Uh, it's 12 by 12 inch sheets. You get 25 of these in a pack for like 20 bucks or less. Uh, there's a link in the video description below to my Amazon affiliate link. It's listed there in my storefront. If you use that link, same cost to you. Delivery's unaffected. It's just I get a small kickback for having referred you. If you want to support the channel, free and easy way to do it. Anyway, I love this stuff because it's like two millimeters thick. It's very sturdy. It takes paint and glue really well. It's cheap and it can be cut with a utility knife very easily. So. Graphics medium chipboard, the miracle crafting material. All right, no further ado, let's go. So there's several modular components involved with this project, but it all starts with what I'll call the towers. That's these stackable sections here. So save your soup cans, six to eight of them, peel the paper off, and then measure the height. Now, the U.S. is but a small part of the world, so I have no idea what other countries like canning standards or manufacturing might be, but I can say most of the soup cans I've come across are 112 millimeters long. So measure yours, get a real good measurement, and write it down. That number is going to be important as we go along. I'm going to assume 112 millimeters from here on out. Then take it outside, get some spray primer on it. This is because acrylic craft paint will not stick to bare metal very well at all. And while you're at it, get some cross-stitching mesh, sometimes referred to as granny grating. This is available at literally any crafting or fabric store, and it's really, really cheap. Take it outside and spray one side of it black as well. I like Krylon's matte black. Good performance, good price. And now we go to chipboard. Here is a diagram of a shape we're going to use a lot. So for simplicity, I'll just refer to this as the basic shape. It's a four inch square with half inch clipped corners. On a 12 by 12 inch sheet of chipboard, you can fit nine of them perfectly. So here they are measured out and drawn. The top and the bottom of a tower section will require a sandwich of three basic shapes each. So you need to prepare six basic shapes per tower section. First, we'll address the top. Here's some more diagrams. You'll need one basic shape, one basic shape with these rectangles cut out of each side and a big square cut out of the middle. And finally, a basic shape with a smaller square cut out of the middle. Take note of these dimensions because they're really, really important to ensure that our modular pieces work well together later on. Screen cap it if you have to. Use a metal ruler and multiple passes with a sharp blade in order to get nice, clean cuts. Oh, by the way, these tabs, these half inch by two inch rectangles, hold on to them. It's going to save time later. Here's the three pieces for a tower top. We're going to attach them with a thin layer of white PVA glue because it doesn't introduce extra thickness and because chipboard drinks up white glue. I mean, within 60 seconds, it is dried and really strong. So here we go. Going to put this middle piece on and apply some pressure all around. Just work it for a few seconds. Check on all the edges. Make sure they aren't pulling away from each other. In a minute, it'll be good to go. Now, this is going to seem out of order, but trust me, it is worth doing this way. Take your black acrylic craft paint and fill in that square. It'll be dry within 60 seconds. Then measure out a square of the cross stitch mesh to fit. Apply a bead of hot glue around the edges and install the mesh. If you hadn't based in black first, it is an absolute nightmare trying to stab a paintbrush down into that mesh to get the surface underneath it. Trust me, do it this way. And lastly, apply another thin layer of white glue and attach the third piece on top. Notice that the square in the top is smaller than the one that the mesh is in. The intent here is that it hides the ugly edges of the mesh and the hot glue, so you get a really nice presentation of just this grating that's in the floor. Also, it secures the mesh in there forever. If that hot glue ever fails, it doesn't matter. And so you can see now on each edge we have these two inch long slots. These slots will be used to attach components later on. And that's why it's really important to apply pressure and make sure that white glue really secured the layers together because these slots need to be exactly the thickness of a single layer of chipboard. No more, not even a micrometer. For the bottom of the tower, it's much easier. You need two basic shapes and a third basic shape with those slots cut out. Here they are ready to go. 
and we just build the sandwich using thin layers of white glue. Make sure you're using good old plain Elmer's, not like school craft glue or repositionable Elmer's glue, just Elmer's white glue. Now on each sandwich, find the center point. So just measure two inches inwards, draw lines that cross, and that gives you the dead center. Then what I did was take a compass and set it to be slightly larger than the radius of the soup can and draw a circle. The intent here is that when you place the soup can on the slab, you can see a circle just outside of it. It's a visual aid to make sure that you glue the can directly in the center. Next, we're gonna make those vertical structural members. Measure out 112 millimeters, or whatever your length is, and cut three rectangles, one of them 20 millimeters wide, and the other two five millimeters wide. Take an office hole punch and punch some holes along the middle of the big one. I spaced them out every three quarters of an inch or so. These thin ones are gonna be attached to the big one using hot glue on the side, but they're so small that it's really finicky to do that. So here's a technique to help. Get something that's flat and straight and square. I just used some scrap double corrugated cardboard here. Put it down, place the thin strip up against it and then pin it there with the wide piece, like this. Hold those in place with one hand as you apply a bead of hot glue. Blow on it to help it cool faster. Should be good to go in a minute. Apply a thin strip to the other side in the exact same manner. So this is a vertical girder and you need to make four of these for a single tower. It's time to assemble. Now, metal conducts heat really well and hot glue cools almost instantly, meaning you have no working time. And the open end of the can has a really thin rim, so you'll probably end up with a messy, like, blob of hot glue if you're not perfect. So here's what I do. Cut some spare scraps of foam board or something like that. Hot glue them on the inside of the rim, about a millimeter down from the edge. And then you apply blobs of hot glue to that foam then you place the can. So this gives you a few seconds of working time because the foam isn't absorbing heat. And if you need to slide the can around and ensure it's right in the center of your circle, uh, it also makes sure that hot glue won't bulge out because it's offset from the rim. To attach the other base is the trickiest part of this segment. First of all, lay down a nice thick bead of hot glue set inwards a few millimeters from your circle. And now you need to make sure you attach such that the top and bottom slabs are aligned with each other. This is really important. To help with that, I use some scrap and butt it up to the base. You can rock it back and forth and feel, as well as visually see, when it's flush with an edge. Then you bring over the tower and do the same thing with the other base in the air. Just feel and look to see when it's flush and keep it that way as you lower it down onto the hot glue. Afterwards, you can check for squareness using the same technique. And honestly, I use a really thick bead of hot glue, so you do have like three or four seconds to move it around if you need to, because it doesn't cool quite that instantly. For the vertical girders, I just use a small bead of hot glue, put one end of the girder in place. I like to set them about five millimeters back from the clipped corner, but do whatever you like, as long as you're consistent. Then you flip the tower over and another bead of hot glue to pin the other one in place. Now two quick variants on the tower and then we'll talk about how to secure them together. First up is easiest, nothing. Just don't put anything in the middle, enough said. The other variant is just a box. So cut four rectangles at two and a half inches wide and their height was again, 112 millimeters, but again, make it identical to whatever your cans are. And then I cut three squares of double corrugated cardboard. Single corrugated works too, but these are two and a half inch squares. Hot glue the panels to the sides of these squares in order to create a square pillar without having any hot glue oozing out the corners. Hot glue this assembly to a top or a bottom, making sure to center it. Then attach the other base. Again, making sure it's centered and aligned with the other base like we did before. And then attach the girders just as before. Now you have a bit of a blank canvas to get creative with. Toys like Lego Technics pieces or Kinects, bottle caps, leftover bits from your miniature sprues, heck, the sprues themselves, the sky's the limit. Go crazy. Make it look as clean or as techno-gothic as you like. Later on, I'll show you all the stuff that I did on these. So that's how we build the tower sections. To make taller towers, we're gonna use clamps to attach them together. So to make a clamp, Take those slots that you cut out earlier, the two by half inch rectangles, you're gonna need three of them. 
First, slice off about one to two millimeters with scissors. Again, to make sure that they'll insert accounts for tiny manufacturing error. Then cut one of them in half lengthwise and white glue those two lengths together. Clip the corners of the remaining two rectangles and make a sandwich like you see here. So we got two layers of chipboard in the middle. Now here's two tower sections and for now I'm just going to use two of these clips. So one goes in that side and one in the other. And watch how strong this already is. I'm holding this thing by the top of one of the towers with one hand and it's rock solid. Awesome. It's going to be very stable on the table. So we'll come back and do some painting later on, but for now let's move on to the walkways. The walkways are going to be three inches wide, and although you can make them as long as you want, I strongly recommend that you always do lengths in multiples of three in the interest of modularity. So let's build a nine inch long walkway. Again, it's a three piece sandwich. The bottom is simply a three by nine rectangle. Easy. The top layer is also pretty easy. It's just a three by nine rectangle with some rectangles cut out of it. Notice that it's sort of a half inch wide frame. It's really important that you do that a half inch or thicker, wider is fine, but it's basically a frame and grating is gonna show through those, uh, those empty spaces. I saved the middle layer for last because it's the tricky one. Here's a diagram. We're gonna use the same concept that we used for the top of a tower piece a few minutes ago. So this is a three by nine inch rectangle, except that it's got two tabs on the short ends, each of which is two inches wide and a quarter inch deep. Here it is all measured and cut out, but here's a nuance that's really important. In truth, those tabs aren't actually two inches wide. I leave them like a millimeter or two short. That way it'll fit nicely into those slots, accounting for any tiny manufacturing error that you might've had. It's also a good idea to go ahead and clip the corners so that they don't get damaged after lots of use. Back to the diagram. So you see we're going to remove most of the middle, basically leaving a quarter inch frame around the perimeter. And then after that, we're actually going to eliminate some two inch portions of that frame. These are going to become the slots eventually, but you'll notice this means we're going to end up with multiple pieces. So what I like to do before that is take the bottom layer and mark where those pieces are going to end up. So we cut out the middle layer and white glue those pieces onto the bottom. Notice that for every three inches of length, we have a two inch gap that's centered in it. This right here is why I recommend doing multiples of three inches for the overall length. Anyway, with that done, cut some mesh to fit, insert it. Again, you can do some hot glue, but it really doesn't matter. You could just let it float in there. And then white glue on the top layer. Remember, pressure and double check that the layers are all sticking together. About 60 seconds, it should be all set up and dry. So that's a walkway. The tabs can insert into towers to connect them together. But the cool thing is with the slots along the sides, you could attach more walkways like an intersection or other features, which we're gonna get into in just a little while. Now your facility might be kind of boring, all boxy square right angles. So let's make a 45 degree turn. If you're not strong in math, do not be turned off or intimidated by what we're about to do. It is easier than it looks. Just follow me step by step. From a fresh corner, measure in three inches and mark. Then with your protractor that you've had since second grade, measure 45 degrees, mark, and draw a line. Measure out three inches along that line and mark again. Use the protractor to find 90 degrees from there and mark again draw another line connecting those last two marks. Once again, measure three inches, 90 degrees on the protractor, mark, and draw a line. Now go back to the original corner and measure three inches the other direction and mark. Then move the ruler away from that edge, slide it away some amount, a few inches, doesn't really matter how much, measure in three inches and mark. Connect the last two marks you made with a line and you've got your shape. Cut it out. And instead of doing this process every time, write a T on it for template and use it to trace copies going forward. Never trace copies of copies, always trace this one, the one with the T on it. Here it is with the middle layer attached and notice two things. Number one, we have slots in the outer edges but not the inner edges because they're too small. Oh well. And secondly, and more important, one end has a tab like we're used to, but the other has a slot. You'll see why in a moment. 
And be sure that your grating makes a turn as well. Use two pieces like this. Cool, turned out good. The idea is this 45 degree turn is really an adapter of sorts, is meant to be connected to a straight walkway. That's why one side has a tab and one side has a slot. And I actually only made two of these. One's a left turn and one is a right turn, because I think that's all I'm ever going to need to introduce offsets on the table and make the facility more interesting. But I saved my template for future use. All right, again, we're gonna cover painting at the end so that we have a consistent treatment of all these components. But for now, let's start making some clip-on features. Let's do railings first, since they're pretty easy. Now I experimented with a couple ideas, bendy straws, hair curlers, because I'm gonna be making like 50 of these. So I need ease of construction, and I was willing to sacrifice on the coolness of the overall finished look if it meant speed. So I decided to keep it simple, just keep rolling with chipboard. Cut a bunch of quarter inch wide strips, just make a stockpile of them. Chop a strip to be three inches long, or slightly less than that, again to account for, for manufacturing error. Then chop three one inch pieces and glue them on perpendicular, like you see here. And then complete that sandwich with another three inch length. Then another sandwich with two three inch pieces to sandwich the loose ends. So notice we have a nice channel here, and the reason I did it this way is that the hot glue has somewhere to go, and it won't ooze out the sides. It's also going to be a lot stronger. Cut a final 3 inch length and hot glue the fence to it like this. I also, after it was dry, nipped the upper corners, so I just used the knife and sort of carved my way through it. Three layers is a lot to get through, so don't try and use scissors. Now there's two ways to do this last step. The first is easy, just take one of those rectangles, clip the corners, and glue it on, making sure that it's centered. Easy. So this can go anywhere that you have a slot. But as I was filming this bit, I had a thought. I don't recommend doing it this way. Instead, use a clamp, just like we made earlier. White glue it on there, centered. Now why do this? I mean, 99% of the time, your railing clip-ons are always going to be on a walkway that only has one slot anyway. Why bother with this? Well. It's for those few use cases like this one here. You have an empty tower section on top and it's traversable by models, so it might make sense to have railings there. But if you have a clip on there, it'd also be really nice to have a clamp there. After all, odds are you have at least two walkways occupying two other sides of this tower. So, have both at the same time. Of course, that begs the question, why not just make eight or 10 of them that way? Well, then they don't look the same. Plus, that block of chipboard is incredibly strong, and you can insert and remove your clip-on features by grabbing it instead of the feature. Here it is on a walkway, and look, yeah, that lower tab isn't doing anything. It doesn't need to be there, but pull back just 12 inches and you can't even see it. In fact, I think that big block of chipboard there adds another little something to the overall look. It'll be apparent later on when we paint everything. I think the advantage of using the clamps will become more obvious with some of the other clip-on features we're about to explore. And a final thought, I mass produced these by building a grid like this, just gluing strips together. So right here is 48 railings, gave it a few hours to let it totally truly dry, and then just chop them apart. About an hour of work total to build and paint 48 railings. Stairs. Again, I experimented with a couple of approaches, trying to balance ease of construction, overall look, and playability. I wanted a typical infantry model to be able to stand on the stairs, for real. I decided that the treads hanging slightly over the stringer was important for the overall look, so here's what I did. I measured the total height of a tower to be 120 millimeters. I took an educated guess that 8 steps would look good and fit well, it's also divisible into 120. So, I drew out an 8x8 grid of 15mm squares. Then draw a diagonal across two extreme points, like this. And then offset by one vertex and draw another line, like this. So to cut out a stringer, you first slice away that second line, then start chopping away at the stair step. Again, this is one of those things that's awkward to explain, better to visualize, so just watch what I've done here. With two of those stringers cut, it's time to cut out the treads, which are very easy. These are just rectangles, about 20 millimeters wide, and three inches long. Also, before cutting them apart, it is helpful to mark a line a half inch in from each short end like this. Because, to assemble, I simply use a thin bead of hot glue on the stringer, then stick a tread on it. Same for the other stringer. 
The positioning of the stringers should be two inches apart, and that's what the lines on the treads were for. You can easily make sure that they're centered and the correct distance just by looking at those lines as you attach the tread. And finally, a simple two inch tab glued to the underside of the topmost tread. If your tower height is different than mine, the thought process is the same. Use an even rise over run ratio to keep things simple for yourself and pick a number of treads that divides evenly into the height. And if you need to fudge the overall height, you can get away with up to a millimeter of cheating. So like if my towers were 121 millimeters, I still would have just used eight treads. So that's stairs. And finally, these individual wall sections. These are helpful for long stretches of walkway where they might be flexing and need some extra support. They're also great for blocking line of sight so you can place them strategically, two right next to each other and so on. Real easy. Corrugated cardboard. Cut out a rectangle. You want the corrugation to be running in the long direction. Now this rectangle is two and seven eighths of an inch wide. Why not three inches? Because we need to leave space for chipboard slabs on the side. You'll see in a minute. As for the height, it's 116 millimeters tall. Why 116? Well, it's the base 112 from the soup can, plus four layers of chipboard to get us from the ground up to the slot, which I measured to be 118 millimeters minus one layer of chipboard for the base of this wall feature, bringing it down to 116. If that wasn't clear, it will be in just a sec. Then cut two chipboard slabs, exact same size, and hot glue them onto each side. Then cut some thin strips of chipboard to cover the exposed long edges. Nice thick bead of hot glue in that channel. These two side pieces bring the overall width up to our normal three inches. Then just a small rectangle like 20 millimeters wide to serve as the base, just hot glue it on there. And with the base attached, the overall height is now up to 118 millimeters. For the top, another slab of chipboard, but include a two inch tab as part of it, just like the walkways, centered obviously, and hot glue that on there. And finally, I strongly recommend you go ahead and put together a railing and attach it on top, since 99% of the time that you're using this wall feature, it's to support a walkway, which means you probably want a railing above it. Now we're about to go paint these up and then see everything in context, but a few quick reminders first, if you like this video, don't hesitate to hit the like button, subscribe, etc, etc. There is a link in the description below for my Amazon storefront, easy, free way to support the channel if you want, just buy your stuff through that link. And for all you 3D printers out there, Wylox Crafting Vids is sponsored by Heroes Horde, which has an excellent range of high quality models, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines, which are open lot compatible. Also check out my modules over on the DMs Guild, and remember, $3 patrons get free copies of all my releases. Let us paint. I wanted to keep it very simple, just a few colors. A solid black, gunmetal or some kind of dark silver metallic, a copper or a bronze metallic, and then industrial color such as gray, beige, or olive green. I went with slate gray because it has a very slight blue tint to it, and I've used it on my other industrial terrain before, so it'll match nicely. Start out easiest with just a single clamp. Base it in solid black, and then do an overbrush with gunmetal. This is not a full coat, you want like 80% coverage. And the way to do it is dip the brush and then work a little bit of the paint right back off on the palette. Similar to a dry brush, but using a lot more paint. Strike at the piece kind of quickly a few times till you get the coverage you like. And the idea is to get this hard, ancient metal look. Railings, again, base in black, overbrush with gunmetal, easy. Walkways. Take your industrial color and paint up the edges as well as the frame. Simple. You might need two coats. Then with gunmetal, hit all the grates. And then nick at the edges, inside and out. This is easier to show than describe. Just go along the edge, flicking the brush backwards and away. Some nice cheap and easy aging. Now mix up a black wash of about 10 parts water to one part paint. And wash all the surfaces that have your color. Don't forget the edges. It goes on fairly dark. It will dry much lighter. Look at this, you can see how rich I've mixed it. If yours goes on lighter than this, wet, you might want to add more paint to your mix. I'm serious, it really does dry a lot lighter. So experiment on a single piece first, kind of figure out how you want yours to look, and mix up a large batch of wash like I did so you can use it on future projects and have things look consistent. Towers. 
The sequence I recommend is this. Base black the vertical girders, the underside of the top, and if there's a soup can in there, do that as well. I know we primed it black, but I just like to unify everything with the same shade. Then take your chosen color and do all the other surfaces. Again, don't forget the edges. Now overbrush with gunmetal. Do the grating on top, the soup can if there is one, and the vertical girders. For those, I don't bother with the insides of them. Just leave them black. You never see it. Then nick at the edges as before, and black wash on all the color. And as one final touch, we're going to take that other metallic copperish color and just randomly strike at a few spots wherever you have gunmetal. Quick and easy aging, rusted kind of look. That's really the recipe. I don't need to go into it any heavier. You apply the same technique to your stairs and your wall pieces and whatever else you make. Just a few colors. One last thing before the big reveal. I talked about attaching Greeble to the box towers and the wall sections, just like we did back in episode 80 for the void shield generator. Remember that base had all those pieces on it, and then we used leftover miniature sprues, painted them up, and glued them on as miscellaneous detail. Same as in episode 110 for the industrial wreckage scatter. Or episode 77 with the gothic buildings, specifically the manufactorum. I bring those up because although you'll probably want to do something like that, this time around I actually use these detail plates from a 3D model line called Necroplex. I was a proud Kickstarter backer for this and I absolutely love Necroplex, but I printed way too many of these detail plates and now I finally have an excuse to use them. So I hot glued them on after all the painting was done. Okay, as always, what good is terrain without some models for context? So here's Ultramarines defending this facility against Tyranids. Uh, this has most of the stuff that I've made for this set. So 12 towers, 5 soup cans, 5 boxes, 2 empty, 4 stairs, 4 wall supports, and 48 railings. So that was that's basically my starter kit. That made what you see here. Oh, and the walkways. I've, I've got some spare walkways actually, but you, you actually need surprisingly few of those, especially if you do 12 inch lengths like I did. But look at this, look at this scene, staring down the big guy. That is the kind of stuff that's possible with good terrain. Yeah, I love it. This is what I live for. I'm not a competitive 40k player, I live for big scenes like this, just the, the showcase of it. Here's a case of Hammernators holding off some, honestly, some poor Tyranids, they have no idea what they're in for. These Tyranids were airbrushed, mostly, and then I did use a satin varnish on them. It looks a little glossy in this video, but really it's a satin varnish. And I know that's taboo, but I think it works for Tyranids because of their bug-like nature. Look at this swarm coming up the stairs all the way up to an honor guard, defending a kit-bashed chapter master. Bunch of custodies bits thrown on there. Everything I had left over. Just threw it together and that that's mostly what my HQs are. I am definitely not a what you see is what you get kind of guy. About 20 hours total work for all the pieces, which again I listed just a moment ago. So it's not hard, it's easy, but it takes a long time. It is tedious, so it will challenge your uh, your carpal tunnel and your sanity. Fly around, get a look at some of the other skirmishes going on here, and come to the other side of the table. Let's look at this carnage from a different vantage point. Yeah, and man, that's like one of trillions of combinations you could put together with with just these components. I'm so and I'm so excited to embellish it further with other types of clip-ons and stuff. You know, a lot of people say like the miniatures are the star of the show. I disagree. I think the terrain and the miniatures are the stars of the show. I think they're equally as important. A quick glamour shot of the Terran effects. Ooh, I do apologize. I haven't finished painting those dreadnoughts. Heresy. Almost everything you see on this table, uh, aside from the miniatures, we've built on the channel. Uh, the bunkers are coming up soon, but literally everything else you can find in another episode. The crags, the fuel depot, that power station. So if you're interested, just check the back catalog. On that note, I am one of many YouTube tabletop crafters, and I, I would call myself probably in the upper end of amateur going into journeyman, and I'm just sharing my lessons as I go via this channel, but there's a whole collection of us. Find the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook. We are 20,000 strong and growing. Come on, join us if you are interested in or are an expert terrain maker. We want the whole gamut. We want everybody there. 
terrain crafting is a very rewarding experience. It opens a whole new world, so if you're only a miniature painter right now, come on, dive in. And now I need your help. I need ideas for a follow-up video to this. I want to do like 15 or 20 little additional embellishments, clip-on ideas, uh, shield walls, banners. Look at the top of a railing, for example. What do you see there? Two more small slots. So we can do a clip-on to a clip-on, like a control panel or something like that. The sky's the limit. So leave a comment with an idea. Uh, go get started on your infrastructure. And by the time you're finished, hopefully that next video will be out. Let's do this next one together. If you liked this particular project, here's two more that you should go check out right now. Also, enjoy this month's community showcase. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell reminder icon. I am Wylock, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.